Automatic Tramming Device for Locomotive Engines, a video guide by Hateman Electronics. For more information, refer to the written manual included with the automatic tramming device. The first step in operating the Hateman Electronics automatic tramming device is to prepare the barring over tool for use. For the purposes of this video, we have placed the barring over tool on a separate cart. However, it can be prepared in its saddle on the automatic tramming device. First, attach the motor lead with the red insert to the motor on the barring over tool. This is simply done by inserting the connector in the proper orientation and screwing it into place. Next, attach the motor lead with the white insert to the motor in the same fashion. Be sure to check that you are placing each connector in the proper place because each has a different number of pins. Forcing the connectors into place may damage them. Finally, attach the 9-pin connector labeled ENC to the encoder on the end of the barring over tool. A small flathead screwdriver is required to land the screw on each side. This helps to keep the connector in place and prevents it from falling out. Be careful not to over tighten the screws. Step 2 is placing the barring over tool on the engine. It is always placed on the side of the engine that would have the locomotive alternator to your right hand side. Warning, the barring over tool is very heavy. Do not attempt to lift and or place by hand. Use the supplied lifting strap to move it with a crane or other assisted lifting mechanism. Lift the barring over tool out of its saddle on the automatic tramming device using a crane or other assisted lifting tool. There are four bolt holes surrounding the bottom of the large cam gear that will be used to mount the barring over tool. Lower the barring over tool to be near the engine block just below the cam gear. Do not remove the lifting strap until the tool is fully bolted into place. Using the same bolts used for the cam gear cover, bolt the barring over tool to the engine block. Be sure to start each bolt by hand to ensure that they are not cross-threaded. Failure to do so may result in breaking of bolts in the engine block. Torque the bolts into place to make sure that they are tight. Finally, remove the lifting strap from the crane. Step 3 simply involves the preparation of the tramming tool. For the purposes of this video, the tramming tool was prepared on a separate tabletop. It may be prepared either in its seat on the automatic tramming device or on a separate tabletop. Warning: The tramming tool is a very sensitive measurement device. Be careful not to bump or drop any portion of it. Failure to do so may result in damage to the tramming tool. Attach the 9-pin connector labeled LVDT to the mating connector on the arm of the tramming tool. Using the supplied 1.5 inch long screws and 440 nuts, bolt the two connectors together. This is achieved by feeding the screws through both connectors on either side. Step 4 involves inserting the tramming tool. It is always placed on the side of the engine that would have the locomotive alternator on your right hand side and the cylinder opening closest to the alternator. Warning. The tramming tool is a very sensitive measurement device. Be careful not to bump or drop any portion of it. Failure to do so may result in damage to the tramming tool. Carefully pick up the tramming tool. Lower it down into the cylinder opening so that the brass knob is pointing down towards the camshaft. This knob should make contact with the first shaft lobe. The 
four arms on the tramming tool should sit on the machined face of the engine block so that the tool is centered in the cylinder opening. If the tool does not appear to sit flat on the machined face, or the brass knob does not seem to be touching the lobe, it should be fixed by the adjustment procedure in step 5. In step 5, the tramming tool will be adjusted so that it can properly measure the lobe on the camshaft. Warning. Be sure to adjust the tramming tool prior to first use and as needed afterwards. Failure to do so may damage the tool if the automatic tramming device is run while the tramming tool is bottomed out. In order to adjust the tramming tool, it must first be determined whether or not the tool is bottomed out. There are two easy ways to figure this out. Gently lift up on the brass knob at the end of the tool. If the knob doesn't move, and neither does the gauge, then the tool is likely bottomed out. Also, if the arms of the tramming tool do not sit flat on the machine surface of the engine block, then the tool is likely bottomed out. Loosen the set screw on the side of the brass knob in order to allow the knob to turn freely on the shaft of the tramming tool. If the tool is not already bottomed out, gently loosen the brass knob until the gauge bottoms out. Check and record the gauge position. It will not be the same on every tramming tool. Tighten the brass knob slowly until the gauge starts to back off from where it is bottomed out. When the gauge backs off between three and six thousandths of an inch, stop. Tighten the set screw on the brass knob so that it is snug to prevent the setting from changing over time. Do not over tighten or the tramming tool could potentially be damaged. Step 6 shows how to run the automatic tramming device in order to place the engine at top dead center. Warning: Before running the automatic tramming device, make sure that all cables and personnel are clear of the engine. Do not touch the engine in any way while the red light on the automatic tramming device is flashing. Failure to do so may result in serious injury and or damage to the equipment. Start the automatic tramming device by pressing the button directly under the word TRAM on the lower left hand side of the screen. The TRAM touch button on the screen itself may also be used. The screen will switch to say RUNNING and the red testing light on top of the device will start flashing. Almost immediately, the barring over tool will start turning the camshaft and the gauge on the tramming tool will start rotating as the lobe passes under the brass knob. Once the lobe passes the knob, the barring over tool will stop turning the shaft and the automatic tramming device will process the position of the shaft. This may take up to a minute or more. Do not touch the engine during this process if the red light is still flashing. Once the position of top dead center has been calculated, the barring over tool will once again rotate the engine. It may stop and reverse once more before finishing. Upon completion of the tramming, the screen will say tramming complete and the red flashing light will go out. The engine is now at top dead center. After completing the first automatic tramming, it's time for step seven, placing the timing ring. This video does not go into detail on how a timing ring is to be placed on the engine properly. That information should be provided by General Electric Transportation Systems. Once the timing ring is on and in position but the bolts are not torqued down, pull out the check bar and pin it into place so that it is clear of the timing ring. The eighth and final step is the verification tram. This is to verify that the engine is still in top dead center and that the ring is placed accordingly. Warning: In addition to following the warnings from the previous tramming, make sure that the check bar is out and clear of the timing ring before tramming the engine. If it has not been done already, pull out the check bar and pin it into place so that it is clear of the timing ring. Run the automatic tramming device as before. If the ring is tight, it should rotate back and forth before stopping in the same location that it started. When the tramming is complete and the flashing light is off, remove the pin on the check bar and release it. 
The groove on the bar should line up with the tooth as before. Remember, do not release the check bar until the flashing light is off and the tramming is complete. If at any time the tramming device needs to be prevented from running or it needs stopped in an emergency situation, there is an emergency stop button above the screen on the tramming device. When the e-stop button is pressed, the barring over tool will immediately stop turning the engine. The flashing light will continue for a few seconds before going out and the screen will say stopped, indicating that it is now safe to operate around the engine and the tramming device. In order to resume function, twist the e-stop button to release it. Upon doing so, 5 seconds must pass before pressing the tram button to resume use of the device. If a tramming is started without waiting the required 5 seconds, the red light will begin to flash but the engine will not turn. If this happens, simply wait until the flashing light goes out and try again. The following is a demonstration on how to adjust the LVDT sensor inside of the tramming tool. Warning: Do not perform this procedure unless absolutely necessary. Doing so incorrectly may result in poor tramming tool performance or failure. Each tramming tool is set up upon arrival, so this procedure should only be necessary in rare circumstances. Use a small Phillips screwdriver to remove the single mounting screw on the 9-pin connector. This will detach the connector from the arm of the tramming tool. Use the same screwdriver to remove the screw holding down the ring on the grounding wire. Using a pair of wire cutters, carefully clip the three zip ties holding the black cable to the gauge portion of the tramming tool. Flip the tramming tool over so that the back of the gauge is shown. This will reveal four black hex head screws that need to be removed. Do so to release the sleeve around the LVDT. There is a compression fitting that holds the LVDT sensor in place. Using two adjustable wrenches, hold the lower sleeve that is connected to the gauge and loosen the compression fitting holding the LVDT. This should allow the sensor to slide freely. Connect the LVDT sensor to the tramming tool connector. This allows the automatic tramming device to monitor the LVDT sensor. Make sure that nothing is pressing on the brass knob or pressing in the plunger on the end of the tramming tool in any way. Pull the LVDT sensor out until the screen reads Tram Tool Down 2047. Carefully slide the LVDT sensor in towards the gauge until the number barely starts to change. 2020 to 2046 is an ideal number. Tighten the compression fitting on the LVDT sensor and make sure that the number on the screen stays in the proper range. Do not over tighten this compression fitting. This could cause damage to the LVDT sensor or the compression fitting. Once the compression fitting is tight, press in on the brass knob and hold it there. Verify that the screen changes tram tool to up and displays a number between 650 and 700. Disconnect the LVDT cable from the tramming tool and slide the metal sleeve back into place over the LVDT sensor. Replace the four hex screws in order to hold the sleeve in place. Reattach the connector and ground wire to the arms of the tramming tool. Finally, add zip ties back onto the cables in order to prevent them from being damaged. The tramming tool is once again ready for use. Thanks for watching the informational video for the Hateman Electronics automatic tramming device. For more information, please refer to the written user manual included with the device.